Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today, the star of the show is going to be at Abu Ambassador. It's a Swedish-made one. It's the 4601C3. When you see that odd designation, odd number designation, it means that the reel is a left-handed cranking reel. And uh, this one's in from service. Uh, Matt sent in a group of four of these. It's got a lot of dirt on it. We can see it on the side here. Been used a while. And it's in to uh, get cleaned up. Uh, taken apart, parts checked, and uh, serviced. So that's what we'll do over the course of this uh, video. We'll show you how to take this reel apart. We'll explain a little bit about how that reel works. We'll show you the key service points to it. And uh, if you have one of these, you'll know how to tune it up and uh, how to get it going again. If you have the even numbered reel, well, it's going to be the same thing essentially, except that it'll be mirror image. So when you're seeing parts come off in a clockwise or a counterclockwise manner, the opposite will hold true for the other side of the reel. All right, so we've removed the, the nut cap. And we're going to take off the rest of the pieces and parts. And while we do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button. The subscription will let you know when I'm working on the reels. I do a lot of different types of fishing reels, not just these round bait casters. And uh, if you want to learn about them, well, it's a great channel and great place to start. It's called Second Chance Tackle because I like to keep reels fishing, give them a second chance. And it's also uh, an opportunity for you to learn how to do it yourself. That's the kind of the motivation behind the channel. And I'm uh, always happy to hear from folks that have said they've watched the video, taken the piece apart, and got it going again. All right, well, on that handle, there is a e-clip sitting right here. You see it's partially removed, and you need to remove that before you can remove any of the other parts after the handle nut. So we're going to remove the e-clip, then we're going to take the handle off. And the handle, as well as most of the rest of this reel, has got a lot of dirt on it. So I'm going to try and clean it all off because dirt is an enemy of a reel. We're going to use some uh, metal polish. In this case, it's just uh, a turtle wax product, chrome polish. It's for automobiles, but it works fine on fishing reels. And 4-0 steel wool, which is a buffing steel wool. It's not an aggressive uh, steel wool at all, but it will help to remove the, the um, built-up dirts in the lake if, um, if needed. And this one has some pretty old uh, dirt in there, so we'll take care of that. While I have the handle off, I'm going to put some oil in both of the handle sides. That'll seep down over time, and it'll help the, the handle continue to spin nicely. When I take the pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray. Those parts trays have uh, proved invaluable over the, the years that I've done this. And uh, it helps because, well, if you think you're done with a reel and you look in a parts tray and there's still pieces in there, well, you're not done with the reel. All right, this is a... I'm uh, going to come off in a reverse thread or a clockwise manner. Again, this is a left-handed reel, so everything is kind of opposite what you would expect from the right-handed reel. So turn this clockwise, you'll be able to remove the star adjuster. And under the star adjuster, you're going to find a series of, of spring or tension washers under there. Those uh, control the sensitivity of the star adjuster. So if you want a lot of... Uh, uh, play, if you will, or, or adjustment sequences in it. You want to nest these opposing phrase, uh, faces. And if you don't want much, well, you just bring that uh, to um, all be together. They're all uh, convex or concave washers. And uh, if you nest them so that they appear to be flat, that's the least uh, resistance and the least sensitivity in terms of that. Well, there's three side plate screws that remain to, to taking off the side plate. So if you take those off, you'll see the corresponding bridge posts. And um, you can remove your side plate, and we can get to the business end of that. If your axle shaft comes out, don't worry. Uh, there's a little um, clip shim uh, washer underneath this spool adjuster cap. I should take that off because we're going to clean it anyway. You'll see that black piece in there. That black piece does grab the axle shaft, and occasionally it pulls it out when you go to remove the side plate. Don't worry, it's uh, perfectly normal, and you didn't break anything. All right, we're going to just uh, take a quick squirt of some penetrating oil on this case here. 
I just help loosen up the, the old dirt and grease and grime there. And then I'm going to use a cotton swab to, to do the best I can to clean that off of the, the case. Just like that. If, you, uh, if you're watching this and you have any questions on the process, procedure, maybe you have the reel, maybe it's a part and uh, you have a question about um, how, how to get it back together again or something, leave those questions in the comment section. I will be happy to, uh, to try and answer those for you. All right, we have a burring underneath here. So let's put some oil on. I'm using a fishing reel oil for that. I'm thinking we should have a burring on this side as well. We do. So pull that little cup off and then uh, put some oil on there and then seal that up. And if you like, you can pull that axle shaft off. Now, I just oiled it both, so it's got plenty of oil on there. But you want to take that out. You want to make sure it's clean. Oil it. And then you're going to ensure that you're going to get the furthest casting distance with that. You'll notice that there's a little bushing or something on the end of the shaft here that points towards the gear side. And the small tip comes through the other side. That uh, bearing is serviced. Over here on the, the non-business side of the reel, if you will, you only have a uh, Teflon or a plastic drive to the uh, reel, which is going to be driven by that plastic part that you saw on the spool. And that's going to intersect with the worm gear, which is kind of hiding behind here on the case. You don't need to remove this case unless you see a lot of dirt in there. This reel is perfectly clean. I don't oil the plastic. The plastic by itself is a self-lubricating uh, uh, piece. So all I do to complete the process on that side is to put a little dab of grease onto this uh, protruding part of the spool. And that's kind of to get it set in that rear case bushing. Remember your, your gears are on the, or your bearings are in the spool. And all you need to do is to line that up. This has two spool brakes. You want to pull them out if you need more uh, tension on your casting and push them in if you don't. And this one has kind of a little bit of a dirty case here. Well, I'm, I don't need to use the penetrating oil on that. I'm going to use a rod and reel cleaner here. This one happens to be by pen and a kitchen scrubby. It's one of those little ubiquitous green pads. And I'm just going to remove the crud. I guess crud is a technical term, huh? That crud that's built up there from leaking oils and creases that have dried out over time. I'll do that. I'll just polish that up. I'm going to also use that on the case. We did the penetrating oil on the one. It was a little difficult. We'll use it on the case here to continue the cleaning and the polishing. All right, well, that's a simple enough side of it there in terms of dealing with the non-mechanicals. A little bit of cleaning, a little bit of showing you how that spool burning setup works. And now we're ready to get into the gear side here and uh, take care of business with that. So there's two Phillips head screws that are holding the side case on. You want to go and remove those. I'm going to put those right into my tray there so I don't lose them and I know where they are when I go to reinstall. So the C4, the C3 was a change and the basic change in that one was going to the um, a little bit of a different setup internally. I just want to get these tension washers off. They seem to be stuck there. That one does. All right, now we can remove it and show you. So it, it the primary change is you have an instant anti-reverse clutch and you have a simplified uh, bridge. So if you've worked on some of the others and you're wondering what's the difference, well that's pretty much the difference there. As I mentioned, these tension washers are not flat. They, they have a, a belly to them. And the way I like to set them is the outer rims touching and opposing sort of like this. That leaves a gap in the middle and that gives you more sensitivity on your uh, adjustments. All right, let's just take care of the side case. There is a little bit of old grease in here, so we want to get that old grease out. Again, I'll use a cotton swab and I'll use another one to get any residual dirt that may be uh, in there. Well, this is funny. The tip fell off of the cotton swab 
Hopefully one of these days they'll make these papers. But right now there's straw. And uh, people have asked me, is there any substitute for your brake if you've lost a brake? Well, believe it or not, that little straw there from the tip of the, uh, the cotton swab will fit over that piece and you can mimic that brake and replace it to a certain extent just by using a, a small piece cut off of that. Just a uh, happy, uh, happy circumstance there that it fell off to show you that. All right, that's off to the side. This has been cleaned. Let's go over and take care of your gear. And let's take care of the yoke assembly. So we'll work from the bridge plate backwards. And again, this is a left-handed reel. So if you're working on a right-handed reel, this throw here is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be coming from the opposing side. This one has a uh, spring attachment to it that's going to hold. Some of these that you open up, you may not find that spring. What you may find instead is that there's going to be a post here that this is going to sit, the shoulder of it's going to sit to prevent it from coming up. In this case, we have the spring. We're going to remove the yoke and the pinion gear. And we're going to take the jack assembly off. Remember that spring, don't go too crazy with that. And then we're going to remove the trip arm. That'll enable us to get the grease off of that main face there. So I use whatever I can that's the least abrasive when I'm cleaning up these pieces. That means if I can get away with a paper towel or a cotton swab, I'm going to do that first. Then I'll go to that green uh, pad, that scrubby. And then as a last resort, I'll go to the uh, steel walls. And I never go beyond that in terms of trying to clean that stuff up. All right, we're going to just make sure that all of this is clean as well. That old dry grease is going to slow down the performance of the reel. So uh, you just want to take care with that. To reinstall, there's two sides. There's a flat bar on this trip assembly, and then there's one that sort of has a peak to it. The peak points up. And you could, if you want, put a very light coat of grease on this. Or you could put a, uh, a splash of oil on there. Either one will be acceptable. All right, we're just going to seat, seat that properly there. That goes all the way down, and it comes up. You're going to notice that there is a hole here. It's an elongated hole on the bridge. Well, actually, it's going to be coming in from this side, and that is your thumb release to this. There'll be a point there, and the thumb release will come through here. And then when you push down, it's going to to push the whole assembly down to enable a free spool. All right, we're going to take that. Now we have the cleaned piece here. Again, you can put a light coating of grease. Don't go crazy, but a light coating of grease on the surfaces that are going to touch. You want to bring the assembly over so that you can mount that. Just like this, I get my bearings right there. That's going to fit over that trip arm. You're going to bring that up, and now we need to just reattach that spring to the post. Normally easier said than done, so we'll give it a try here. Just going to grab a pick and see if I can't extend it, and then walk it over that point. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So when I first got started on this a long time ago, I was told there's basically two things you need to do when you're working on a reel. Is you need to have some patience and you need to have a sense of humor <laughs> because we've seen enough things fly. All right, properly installed spring, properly installed jack, properly installed trip lever. Oh, spring just popped off. There's your sense of humor. So that's set now. This is your yoke and your pinion gear assembly. This is held in by a little ridge. 
the plastic uh, part. Now there's two sides to this yoke. There's one side that you'll notice has a ramp to it. It's kind of at a 30 degree range. That's the back end that's going to face the spool. You also have the pinion gear. You'll notice that the pinion gear has one side that's wider and has a slot. That faces the spool as well. Make sure that your pinion gear is clean. In this case, there's no debris or anything, just some tarnish. Check the slots, uh, each tooth, to make sure that they're not uh, damaged or broken. And then put a little bit of grease on there. Find the back end ramp, the front end of the spool. Sorry. And that's how this one goes. Facing the spool, ramp to the back. And we can take that assembly and we can put that in just like that. And then we have our spring tensioner that's going to hold that all in place. There's three holes here, but only two of them accommodate the uh, end of the structure. That would be these two. And you can generally tell you got it right if those arms are loading up onto the yoke and then just simply Press down on that evenly, just like that, and this assembly is complete from the top end side. Let's go to the bottom end then. We have a collar here, a spacer, that's going to interact with your anti-reverse clutch. The anti-reverse clutch is intended to run dry, so just make sure it's clean and dry and you should have no problem with your anti-reverse. We're going to take the assembly off here. There's a gear shaft. We're going to just take that gear shaft, making sure that you have that little copper colored washer on it. We'll do a little bit of grease on the, the shaft here on the bridge. Check to make sure that your threaded area is clear of, of dirt. This is an easy place for salt to, uh, to dry out and the like. If you're using it in a salt water environment, just make sure it's clear. We can go ahead and put that gear post uh, back on the post. We have a washer that sits next. Then we can clean the main gear and reinstall the drag washers. If you notice that the drag washers are worn, well, now's the time to replace them. And I get asked questions all the time. Uh, you know, how frequently should I service the wheel? My, my take is several once a year. Now there's reels I get in the shop. I only just did a short on one of them that haven't been serviced in their lifetime and uh, they, be, they become beyond serviceable at some point. That one had a uh, locked in uh, frozen bearing on it. But uh, if you do it once a year it's going to take you, well, it's going to take you a little bit less time than what I'm doing on the video here because the uh, I'm, I'm doing all the talking and not all the work. You can do it faster with the work without the talking if you like. Or you can spend the whole afternoon doing it if you like it that way too. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on there after we check to make sure all the teeth were fine. I'm going to go ahead and mesh the main gear with the pinion gear now, just like that. Now we have a six drag washer setup. These are hard washers. You don't need to do anything with them. You should make sure that they're clean. You don't need to oil them. And they alternate metal washers and hard washers or fabric washers, whatever you have in yours. The first one in is a hard washer. Next one up is called a keyed washer. It's got sort of a rectangular center to it and nothing on the exterior, rounded. And you want to take the second one of those hard washers. Now you're looking for the one that's called the eared washer. Just like with everything else, you want to make sure it's clean and free of debris. It has the two points on each side that kind of looks like ears. And there's a corresponding inset in the main gear where that rests. So make sure that you set that properly. Then we'll do the last hard washer. And then we have what I call the bell washer or the cap washer or the top washer. I really don't call it anything except in my videos, but I know where it belongs. There's an indent on the one side, there's a raised surface on the other. The raised surface appears upwards. And then the last piece for this is that internal spacer or the, uh, 
the cam, if you will, for that anti-reverse bearing, which is in here. All right, we'll just do one more little piece here. And we're ready to reinstall this now. So you're going to take your side plate and you're going to work to make sure that that spacer is set properly. And it comes up through your anti-reverse. And then you need to make sure that you're aligned with your two screw holes that are going to hold that side plate on. And then check the rim all the way around, make sure it's a nice tight seal. Once you do that, you can take those two screws that belong on the side plate and put them back in. That's a Phillips head screw, so it helps to have all of the tools that you need close at hand. Sometimes you'll need a flat blade, sometimes you'll need a, a Phillips head, sometimes you'll need a wrench. I always keep a 10 millimeter wrench right on my bench, right next to me, because well, a lot of these reels, that, uh, that handle nut or others is a 10 millimeter wrench. And then not far off my bench is a, a host of other wrenches and that that I may need over time uh, to complete the project. Well, I just start this. I don't tighten it all the way down there, but that would be the next step. Now we can take those two tension washers that we were discussing before. And as I mentioned, I put one face up, one face down, where the outer ridges are touching, but the inner ridges are raised. And if that kind of sounds confusing, well, when, you, uh, when you're doing this wheel, you will see the noticeable curved shape in the, um, those washers, and you'll be able to act accordingly. All right, now we want to put the star adjuster on. And just as I started that, I realized, well, it's reverse threaded. So you want to turn this. It would seem like you were taking it off the old lefty loosey kind of thing. Turn it counterclockwise. I'm trying to grab the shaft there. There we go. And once you have it cleared enough, you go ahead and put that handle tension spring back on, put the handle back on, and before you go any further, make sure that you tighten that drag down all the way. Why do you do that? Well, you don't want to trap the handle by tightening the handle nut down and then uh, not being able to move the star drag because it was too high up and the pressure of tightening the nut trapped it. Once that goes on, the next thing is that E-clip. Be real careful with this. If you don't have it under control, this guy can go flying. And uh, if it goes flying, well, good luck in your search. It's a small piece and part, and uh, you'll need to act accordingly to, to try and keep yourself from a lot of search and rescue. The handle nut goes on same way. It's going to be a counterclockwise tightening. Tighten it up by hand first. That way you don't risk cross-stripping it. And a good way to do that is to kind of turn it opposite until you hear the threads click. Just there, you may have heard it on the, the piece, but if you turn it that way and hear the threads click, then you can reverse direction and tighten it up and not risk cross stripping, which unfortunately I just had a real in that uh, had that cross stripping problem. All right, once that's up, Generally speaking, if your flat edge of your nut is perpendicular to the hole, then the cap is going to go on and you're going to be able to find the hole so that you can put the set screw in. And uh, it worked out this time. I got lucky. All right, we'll make our final screw adjustment here. And we can assemble the reel. The only thing left now, we've lubricated the uh, internal pieces and parts of the spool. Just a light coating of grease on the, uh, the axle shaft. Now, some people ask me why I put grease does not slow down the reel. Well, I just did a short on a video where the axle shaft froze to the side plate bearings because neither oil or grease was used there. That's kind of what I do to prevent it. I just, I would risk losing a few meters in, uh, in casting to uh, losing the whole thing due to uh, poor maintenance. All right, there's still a little bit of dirt I'm noticing here, so I'm just going to 
put this this way before I go ahead and tighten that. I'll do that piece again, and I guess while I'm doing that, I can tell you that if you have a reel that needs to be serviced, like Matt, and maybe you're not up for it, doing it yourself, or maybe you simply don't have enough time, uh, truly understandable. And uh, if you send a note to my email, let me know what kind of reel you have, and I'll be happy to provide you with the service uh, information. And we have a little bit on this side too. And I just find the penetrating oil just is very quick to dissolve the basic dirts and greases that, that show up. There's others, whatever works for you. I get a lot of product suggestions from time to time. I've tried them all, they all seem to work. With me, a, uh, a bit of penetrating oil is always convenient and uh, seems to get the job done, so I stick with it. All right, I think we got most of that there. So let's go ahead and put this back on. You want to take your side plate. You need to find the handle, the thumb bar release. And your thumb bar release needs to be pulled to the upward position. So it goes both ways. You need to have it up because it's just going to go in that small hole over here on the bridge. And if you don't have it up, it's not going to, uh, to mesh. Once you find that, go ahead and, and reverse. And then just kind of match everything together just like that. Don't force anything. If you find that you're having an issue with the reel, it's not working right. We'll go back and check your work particularly on some of these older ambassadors. If you have a, a finger uh, anti-reverse dog, the one that has the, the two sides to it that grabs the, the click ratchet behind the main gear, well, sometimes you're playing around and that comes off that piece and then it starts to affect how that side plate mounts. So if you've got one of those, by all means, check your work. Don't force anything. and. Uh, You'll be happy with the results. Well, there's only one more thing to do now, uh, short of testing the reel, and that's to service that pole. So we're going to remove the line guide cap. Underneath will be a pole. There we go. The pole sits underneath. You want to grab that with the pliers. Having a little trouble, just tap it out. And on that pole, you want to check to make sure that the points on the pole remain good. This one's in fine condition. And you want to take a pick and make sure that there's no dirt on the shoulders of that. A lot of times these um, line guides will hang up on one side or the other. And when you uh, Go to take a look at it, it's because there's been debris that's accumulated in there. And that accumulation has gathered right on that shoulder point. And the problem is that the uh, debris won't allow it to run properly in the tracks. And that, uh, that causes the issue. All right, so I want to install the cap. This one's a, a narrow based. Um, ambassador. It doesn't have a wide spool at all. Perfect for, uh, well, fresh water and inner ocean. Once that cap is uh, started, finish it off with the screwdriver. And uh, now it's time for a test. So the first thing you want to do is test to make sure that the wheel is turning right. Nice and smooth. There you go. Well, it ha that happens when you, you clean out the dirt and you put in the, uh, the fresh oils and greases. We can put a drop of oil onto that worm gear. I don't use grease because grease traps dirt. I do use the oils. Now we want to make sure that our free spool is working. So press down on your free spool and rotate the spool. That's working fine. Remember what I said that we left this loose. You can adjust your spool accordingly. Make sure that it trips when you turn the handle. There you go. Turn, trips nicely. 
and uh, make sure your drag is tight. Oh, it's not tight enough. It's tight, and then once uh, once you make sure it's tight, back it off. You should back it off after each trip. You don't want to press the oils and greases out of those drag washers. You don't want to have them sticking to the metal. So that's it. That's your uh, Abu Ambassador 4601C3. How to take it apart, how to service it, and uh, how to put it back together again and ensure that it, uh, it's going fishing for a long time to come. So I hope you've enjoyed that. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you've been doing to keep us safe. And to all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.